Thank you for viewing this brief history of Creative Commons. Why do we need Creative Commons? By the end of the 20th century, U.S. copyright laws that had been in existence for 200 years were proving too restrictive for those wishing to leverage technology to create and share their works. With copyright, all rights are reserved by the creator of the work. Creative Commons was founded in 2001 as a nonprofit organization to provide flexibility to copyright laws and in so doing encourage development of a more sharing culture across the globe. Because the World Wide Web afforded people the world over the ability to share creative works and knowledge and to build upon works already in the public domain, creators needed a system by which they could grant permissions to others by waiving some of their rights while retaining others. Creative Commons provided that system by developing licenses based on copyright and making those licenses free and easy to use. After the founding of Creative Commons, social networks, collaborative workspaces, and open academic repositories began to proliferate on the Internet, and now Creative Commons licenses enable users of such platforms to control how their works can be legally shared and remixed. Creative Commons is more than just a licensing body. It is a global network working to create a culture of creating, collaborating, and sharing knowledge. Copyright is a complex set of laws designed to protect the rights of creative people for a limited time, primarily such rights as being compensated for their works and being able to control how their works are used by others. The first attempts to establish any sort of control over creative works developed after Gutenberg created his printing press around 1439, and those first attempts assigned rights to the printers or publishers, not the authors of the works. The first copyright law that gave rights to the creators was the Statute of Anne, passed by the British Parliament in 1709. Copyright was addressed in Article 1, Section 8, Clause 8 of the U.S. Constitution, a clause that later formed the basis for the development of a host of intellectual property laws. By the middle of the 20th century, through a series of conventions and treaties, international copyright laws were more or less standardized. Broadly speaking, the first U.S. copyright laws gave creators who published and or registered their works control over those works for a period of 14 years, renewable for a second 14 years. With subsequent legislation, by 1909, the period of protection increased from a maximum of 28 years to a maximum of 56 years if the work was published and or the copyright was appropriately renewed. The Copyright Act of 1976 removed the fixed term of protection and set the duration as the life of the author plus 50 years. That duration was increased by 20 years in 1998 with the Sonny Bono Copyright Term Extension Act. The legislation enacted in 1998 that increased copyright protection by 20 years was named in honor of U.S. Congressman Sonny Bono, who died in a skiing accident shortly before the legislation was passed and who had had a successful career as an entertainer prior to becoming involved in politics. The intention of the Sonny Bono Act was to make U.S. copyright protections more aligned with those in place in European countries adhering to the Berne Convention. It was also intended to prevent economically beneficial works from going into the public domain, where proponents of the act believed they would become devalued. One major supporter of the act was the Walt Disney Company, whose mascot, the mouse known worldwide as Mickey, was about to have his earliest movie, Steamboat Willie, enter the public domain. Disney's lobbying led to the act sometimes being derogatorily referred to as the Mickey Mouse Protection Act. By the time the Sonny Bono Act became law, the World Wide Web had been in existence for almost 10 years, and creative people were beginning to explore ways of digitally curating works, particularly those about to enter the public domain, and sharing them on a global scale. Eric Eldred, who relied on public domain materials for his internet publishing work, led a group represented by attorney Lawrence Lessig to file a complaint against the law known as Eldred v. Ashcroft. Eldred and others had made plans to republish public domain works and make them freely available via the Internet,
plans that were dashed by the 20-year extension of copyright protection. Lessig argued before the U.S. District Court that the Sonny Bono Act was unconstitutional and thwarted the purpose of copyright. When the judge found in favor of the government, the plaintiffs appealed the decision all the way to the Supreme Court, but gained no victory. Lawrence Lessig's work on Eldred v. Ashcroft inspired him to work with Eldred, Hal Abelson, and others to establish the nonprofit organization we know today as Creative Commons. Within a year, the first Creative Commons copyright licenses were developed and made freely available to the public so that works could be shared without infringing on copyright. The licenses have always had a global application as it has always been the goal of the organization to promote worldwide sharing of knowledge and creative works. When creators publish their works under Creative Commons licenses, they must consider four conditions. Attribution is attached to all licenses so that creators are credited for their work. Creators can also determine the terms under which the work can be shared, whether others can use the work for commercial purposes, and the extent to which the work can be modified. Using combinations of these conditions, Creative Commons now provides six different licensing options for works not in the public domain. Creative Commons is now, quote, the global standard for sharing content with over 1 billion CC licensed works online, end quote. Creative Commons has been a vital tool in the development of open educational resources like those provided for higher education by OpenStax. Within a few years after its founding, Creative Commons developed an affiliate network of more than 500 representatives in over 85 countries. In 2018, that affiliate network was restructured into an international network organization governed by a network council and with both individual and institutional members organized into over 35 chapters. The organization works to support the Creative Commons movement, an international effort to promote collaboration and the free sharing of knowledge and creative and cultural works. The movement maintains social media sites on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, sponsors summits and social events, and works with other free culture movements to promote progress and innovation through free exchange of ideas. This work is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International License, which means that you may use this presentation in any way that you like, as long as you credit me for creating the original version. A list of references I consulted follows. Thanks for viewing this presentation.